With great ring announcing comes great responsibility. Someone once said to me, anyone can ring announce. Despite my anger at the incredible ignorance of this statement, I contemplated biting my tongue. However, that's not really my style, and my barbed response was, you're right, anyone can ring announce, but not everyone can ring announce well. Yes, you need confidence and shoutiness to be able to ring announce. I suspect that is what considered that With great ring announcing comes great responsibility. Someone once said to me, anyone can ring announce. Despite my anger at the incredible ignorance of this statement, I contemplated biting my tongue. However, that's not really my style. And my barbed response was, you're right, anyone can ring announce, but not everyone can ring announce well. Yes, you need confidence and shoutiness to be able to ring announce. I suspect that this is what was meant when they said anyone can do it. However, there is so much more to being a good announcer. Not everyone is, or should be, a buffer family member. They are, without a shadow of a doubt, the most iconic of ring announcers and should be respected. Being inspired by the buffers is a very good thing but to emulate them to the point of sounding like an impressionist is not a good thing. A ring announcer needs their own distinct style to be worth their salt. Like any role within the industry, a good announcer should take bits from each of their inspirational figures, add something of their own, and make something unique. For me personally, I would say that, other than the buffers, I am most heavily influenced by Gary Michael Capetta. Listen to me ring announce and you'll spot it immediately. And to a lesser extent by Justin Roberts. However, I add my own twists. Phraseology is key. It's not something that you would think about until you're in the job. But how are you going to phrase everything? Fans will spot if the way you say things isn't consistent, and it will smack of amateurism. Fans expect a level of professionalism and consistency that can only be achieved with a bit of thought beforehand. You'd be surprised how much room for interpretation there is. Contest, wrestling match or bout, weighing in at or he weighed in at, from or he hails from, etc. A cheeky nuance that I'm somewhat proud of within my own ring announcing when I'm announcing an American import is adding USA after their hometown in the state. I also deliberately use the correct or original British pronunciation of schedule rather than the American pronunciation schedule that has usurped it in popular culture. Giving yourself a distinct voice and sound is something that makes you stand out amongst the field, in my opinion. From phraseology comes style. If your phraseology is formal, it makes sense that your style be formal. If your phraseology is colloquial, it makes sense that you be more casual. This is for both your look and your demeanour. If you compare Magic Mark to, say, Kim Rocks, my formal straight lace style matches my tuxedo and dicky bow. Her relaxed and in-your-face style matches her rock chick look. In a way, it's really not that dissimilar to a wrestler in their ring attire. If you're playing a certain gimmick, you have to look the part. Once you've got your product, you are then permanently in the public view whilst on the show. This is where the great responsibility comes in. A ring announcer is much more than the person that shouts the wrestler's name. You are a gateway between the wrestlers and the fans. A massive intimidating heel should intimidate you. If they loom over you, you are not a superhuman wrestler. You should be scared witless. Your job is to make a wrestler look good. And if you are indifferent to someone that's supposed to be scary, you're doing them a disservice. Similarly, an excitable baby face that wants a hug should be met with an appreciative response for the image you present. For me, it would be politely but slightly awkwardly accepting it. For Kim Rocks, it would probably be gleefully bear-hugging them right back. This then continues further to when you're sat at the ringside table. My absolute pet hate in other announcers is to look over to their table and see them looking bored. 
If the announcer looks bored and isn't engaging with the show, then they are effectively saying to everyone present that they think the show is boring. I Im imagine if you worked in a deli and told everyone the Tarama Salata tasted like crap. You wouldn't last long in that job. So why would a promoter wish to continue to employ you if you're burying their product with your indifference? Staying at the ringside table, a good ring announcer sells as much as a wrestler does. Even if you have been furnished with the finish, you shouldn't behave like you know anything. If a wrestler hits their finisher or a near fall and goes for the pin, go for the ring bell, if you're trying to keep him too, obviously, or the microphone. If you look like you believe it's enough to put someone away, the crowd will buy into it too. Obviously, this should be used sparingly. Another thing an announcer needs to remember is you are the public face of the company before, after and during the show. Fans are unlikely to know the promoter and they will probably make a beeline for you if they want to engage. Fans will ask you questions, so know who you're working for and deal with them politely and in a friendly manner. An amiable ring announcer, someone who has a cool job but is just like them, is someone they can approach. You should be approachable. So in conclusion, it's true that anyone can ring announce. However, going the extra mile and truly engaging with yourself, the wrestler, the fans and the show itself is what makes you an announcer that can do it well.